Celtics. They were cooking last night. Time now for bringing the heat brought to you by Eastern Propane and Oil there in your neighborhood. The Celtics were very much bringing the heat against the Kings last night. The four starters minus Jason Tatum each put up big numbers. Some might even call them all-star performances. Hint, hint, Joe Mazzula. <laughs> Let's bring in Forsberg and Forsberg. Let's go into Forsberg's four, and I'm guessing it's all about those guys who are on fire left. Yeah, so right now the Celtics are making the pitch that all five of their starters should go to All-Star Weekend. Ooh. I'm just going to bring a little bit of reality. Not five guys from the Celtics <laughs> are going to All-Star Weekend. We know that Jason Tatum is going to be there, right? Like he's going to probably get voted in as a fan-voted starter. And then I'm eager to see what happens from there because they could very easily split the vote. But I am here to make the case for why each of the other four non-Tatum starters ought to be in Indy with them. And we start with 14.4, and that is the number of assist points created per game by Jalen Brown over Boston's last seven games. Remember when we said Jalen Brown couldn't dribble, couldn't create for others, mm -hmm. and like we just pigeonholed him as this score-only player, even though he was all NBA and clearly yeah. had more to his game at that Thank point? You. Jalen Brown has gone to another level as a passer this season. I think he's been fantastic, especially in this stretch. Ever since ESPN posted that little right, graphic. So right after that post, it started going up. <laughs> he called it corny, and ever since then, he's been picking teams apart. And I love it because JB finds motivation in everything. Over the last seven games, he has a team best 5.1 assists per game. I just love the vision. There have been plays where he's attacking the basket and just whips it through three guys. Passes that he wasn't making a year ago, two seasons ago, maybe even at the start of this season. It just feels like he is so hell-bent on being great as a playmaker, and I love it because now you can run offense through him and good things happen. I need more of this JB moving forward. The points will be there. Mm -hmm. The Celtics have so much talent there, though, and I want Jalen to continue to be a great creator. That's why Jalen Brown said it was corny in the comments because he knows what he could do as a playmaker. Duh, he knows what his ability is. All right, what's the next one? I will say, I'm going to now, whenever someone makes fun of me on Twitter, I'm just going to call them corny because it's a great comeback. <laughs> Plus 10.5. That is the net rating differential with Derek White on the court. Okay. Okay, the easy way to do this, mm -hmm. the Celtics are a team best 13.2 net rating when Derek is on the floor and it drops to a team worst 2.7 when he's off the court. Here's why that matters. Those are Jason Tatum-like numbers in terms of how the Celtics perform. Like in past years, there was always the, the Celtics were super great with, with Tatum and super bad when he was off the court. Now, all of a sudden, it's Derek White putting up those numbers. And he's done this to a certain degree throughout his career, but this year is even more noticeable. The Celtics are plus 222 in his time on the court this season. That's fourth best in the NBA right now. I think that's only going to go up as we move forward. Here's the other part. So I told you that number there, plus 10.5. Here are the other starters. Drew Holiday, plus 2.9. Porzingis, plus 2.1. Jason, plus 0 0.1, which is a mind-boggling oh, number because okay. usually he's, he's to the moon. And Jalen at minus 1.3, which is weird because Jalen has been so good this season. But for me, it just comes down. Derek has been so good at every aspect of the game. Defense, creating plays, hustle plays, just making every right decision out there. And if I had to fill out that ballot, I told you two weeks ago, people, when we did this segment all about Derek, go watch that if you want more Derek propaganda. <laughs> I think Derek White should be an indie, and that's no slight on everybody else, but he's just been that good. Yeah, Derek White definitely takes his Celtics team to an entirely different level when he's out there on the floor. What's the next one? All right, number three is 1.39, and that is the points per play the Celtics are, are producing off of post-ups, Celtics post-up, by Kristaps Porzingis. <laughs> And so I, I think when we knew when the Celtics went out and got Porzingis this season that you would be getting a guy that could stretch the floor, that would give you a presence around the basket. What I didn't know is just how much of a luxury it is. When your offense is struggling, when you've got nothing going on a play, you just lob that ball in there to Kristaps, and he's going to work a smaller defender. They've done a great job of targeting when he does get a switch onto a small. I mean, like, these guys have no chance oh, no. of stopping this he's against seven a seven-foot oh, three. You can't, you can't do anything with Kristaps Porzingis. His number, that 1.39, is the best in the NBA among players with at least two and a half post-ups per game. He's shooting 68% in those situations. And I just think you look at the numbers overall. The Celtics are 16 and four when Porzingis plays. That's an 800 win percentage. That's like 62 wins and 63 wins. He's really good. He's good at basketball. And I, we didn't even touch on the defense. Mm. I think you can make a strong case for how good Kristaps has been or in the difference maker he's been since arriving in Boston. During the offseason, I did not realize how big of a component Kristaps right. Porzingis would be for this Celtics team. But looking back on it in hindsight, I'm completely happy that they added oh him my gosh. to this roster. It was a perfect fit. All right, last but not least, what do you got? And we miss you, Marcus. But, like, yes. I mean, Porzingis is just, it's just something out there. The last number is minus 7.6. And this is the percent below expected 
field goal percentage that opponents are shooting inside of 10 feet against Drew Holiday. Okay, we knew Drew Holiday was a great defender. He came in with this reputation, all NBA, all defense type of guy, first team guy, someone who probably should be in that DPOY uh, conversation. What I didn't know is that the versatility that he has, his ability to guard pretty much exclusively bigger players. I went back and looked. Here's his, among his top 20 most frequent matchups this season. Here's the list. Donovan Mitchell, Julius Randle, Jalen Brunson, Paolo Banquero, Tyrese Maxey, Tyrese Halliburton, Darius Garland, Joel Embiid, Carl Anthony Towns, Giannis, Ooh. Pascal Siakam, Miles Turner. Okay, first off, I just gave you a list of what felt like all All-Stars or soon to be All-Stars or whatever the case may be. Some MVPs in there. And I gave you guys that are pretty much we went from seven foot two down to like six foot eight. And so Drew's ability to take on these guys in that game against the Magic, where Paolo had it going in the first quarter, what'd they do? Hey, go, go take this guy out. I think it's amazing the way that you can de de deploy Drew Holiday in those situations. It's such a luxury because, I mean, we sit there and obsess about scoring. We obsess mm -hmm. about like, you know, all the stuff that is very obvious. When you sit there and just watch Drew Holiday operate, you're like, man. He's so damn good. And so I think we, he's underappreciated for what he's doing and the role that he's taken on in this team. And now three-point shots coming around. Oh, yeah. He's still playmaking. He's giving the game what it needs. The man makes winning plays.